According to the Germans, during the Second World War, the war was forced upon them. Poland had provoked them to attack and they believed that the Germans had the right to rule over the Poles. Yet Britain and France, they remained at war despite Hitler's peace offer. Now the Germans went onto the offense once again and emerged victorious. How did the German people perceive the war on the West and the subsequent fall of France? More coming up right now, keep watching. Hey, good to have you back on the channel and if you're happy to be new and you think who the hell is this guy and well he's Dutch and he's a history teacher and he's hustling history for you and if you like that well you know what to do and if not I'm gonna tell you right now please consider subscribing and if you do so then also hit that notification bell so you will become part of the hustle. Let's go. I don't want to make these videos to justify this perspective. No, no, no. I want to show you what was going on in the minds of the German people. How did they perceive the Second World War? Explaining it, not justifying it. Uh, wh wh what about the Soviets? Well, well, this video is not about the Soviets. The Soviets, they killed many more people and nobody talks about that. No, nobody talks about that? You, you, you ever read one of these books? No, 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 I don't read books, you know. But on the internet, I saw... You're done, right? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm shooting a video right now. So, you know, if you, if you don't mind, leave a, leave a comment or not. Sorry, folks, let's continue. So, the Germans, they believed that their invasion of Poland was justified. Um, first, because of a, of a Nazi stage Polish attack at Gleiwitz station they believed that the Poles actually invaded Germany but I think moreover that there were ethnic Germans living in Poland and the Nazi press they showed it as if they were being targeted by the Polish authorities therefore they believed that their invasion was justified it goes even deeper than that because they also believed that the Germans were of a higher culture and had therefore the right to rule over the Polish population yet Going to war with France and Britain over this matter wasn't worth it. But since the war was here anyway, the English would have it so. After Poland was dismembered by the Germans, the Soviets and to a lesser degree the Slovaks, Poland soon disappeared from the main public conversation. The Germans hoped that their Fuhrer would make peace with Britain and France. The German press made the most of it. The banner headlines of the party's daily paper, the Wilkischer Beobachter, screaming Germany's will for peace. No war aims against France and England. No more revision claims except for colonies, reduction of armament, cooperation with all nations of Europe, proposal for a conference. Try to understand this. Please, please try to understand it. Hitler was not a peacemaker. The British and the French, they were not having it, and rightly so. Think of the Rhineland, think of the Munich Conference. They had given Hitler so many chances. Hitler was out for aggressive expansionism. But why did they remain at war? I mean, they could just sign a peace. What did they care? But to think of this, that if you would sign a peace now, right? If you would sign a peace now, it would give Hitler time to build up his armies and make a move to the west. So therefore France and Britain remained at war. Well um, at war um, yeah I have to explain this because now we're entering the period of the so-called phony war. Um, what happened during this phony war? Well not much. The French weren't attacking. I mean they did attack when the Germans invaded Poland they invaded the Tsarland but they only captured a few towns and believed it wasn't worth it and then retreated. I think this has to do with the war fatigue that originated from the first world war. So they retreated back to the Maginot line believing to be safe. In April 1940 the Germans invaded Denmark and Norway. Denmark surrendered within six hours. Norway was also taken quickly but the fighting in the north of the country lasted till mid-June. By then the Germans were on the offense in the Netherlands, in Belgium, in France and Luxembourg. The German attack began in the early morning on the 10th of May 1940. At 11 a.m. 
the following headline was announced by the German propaganda ministry. Holland and Belgium are the new objectives for attack by the Western powers. English and French troops have marched into Holland and Belgium. We are hitting back. The people in Germany, they were afraid of being bombed en masse, but this didn't happen. There was also the fear of bombs with poison gas, gas masks were being distributed. Freiburg, the German city of Freiburg was bombed. 60 bombs were dropped on it. Uh, it was actually the first German civilian target that was bombed during the war and it killed 57 people. Next day it was announced that 13 of them were children. It was a children's murder of Freiburg and the French, it was the French. Well, no. It weren't the French, it turned out these were German planes of the Luftwaffe who by accident bombed Freiburg because they believed it was the French city of Dijon. Yeah, well the German press later corrected this. Now it were the English, the English they bombed Freiburg. The attack on France had begun. The German soldier who was stationed in Warsaw, uh, mentioned him in the previous episode, it was his devout Catholic who was a World War I veteran, he wrote the following to his wife. Now the long feared event has happened, the battle in the west has begun, it is now a battle of life and death. I can't rid myself of thoughts about the events taking place in the west. They weigh on my soul like a nightmare. The German SD, the Sicherheitsdienst, security service, was an intelligence agency in Nazi Germany, reported how surprised the German people were with this attack on the West. They noticed that the mood had changed into deep seriousness. People were inwardly convinced of the necessity of this great step and of the sacrifice it will require. The German invasion of the Netherlands I did cover on this channel extensively. I, uh, it's actually one of my best watch videos. I covered it on location so it's a link up here. Go watch it after you've done with watching this one. I haven't covered the German invasion of Belgium and France yet. Thing is I will do that on location so therefore we have to be patient. The German attack looked like a variant of the 1914 Schlieffen plan by attacking France via the Low Countries. This time the Germans moved their panzers through the Belgian Ardennes. Other units moved through Belgium to attack the Allies head on. After the Belgian fortress of Eben Emael was captured, the Belgian troops retreated to the Delay Line stretching from Antwerp to Namur. The first large scale tank battle took place at Hanut where French tanks wrought havoc on light armored German tanks. The following day the German commander Hübner managed to break through a long thin line of French tanks. The French didn't maneuver fast enough due to the lack of radios in their tanks and had to pull back as 29 German divisions advanced through the southern Netherlands and Belgium towards the delay line another 45 advanced through the hilly terrain of Luxembourg and southern Belgium towards the French border and the Meuse river. With 1222 tanks and 378 supportive vehicles under command of General Generals Guderian, Reinhardt and Hoff, they made their way through the Ardennes chasing away the weak French forces there. As the Luftwaffe bombed French positions which brought down French morale, the Germans crossed the Meuse River. Disregarding orders, the French infantry began to retreat. Panic spread to the neighboring divisions and the Germans broke through. They got them on the run. The news of the German breakthrough brought up civilian morale at the home front. The German SD, they reported that the German forces had broken through the channel and completed the encirclement of large enemy armies, raised the tension in the population to a maximum and released renewed excitement everywhere. With the frequently expressed wish that this time England should experience war in its own land. On May 15th, Guterin and Rommel disobeyed their orders and broke through of their bridge hats at Sedan and Dinan moving northwest. The Germans enjoyed good contact between land and air forces and sleep deprived German units that were high on pervertine and isophon moved forwards towards the channel coast and therefore encircling large allied armies. Both German and French commanders were surprised of this success. And it was now that Göring revealed to the public that it was the ID of their Fuhrer all along. The morale at the home front rose to an ultimate high. Yes, think of these 
all the World War I veterans that experienced the defeat at the hands of the French in the First World War. And they now learned that the French were positions were overrun. And then there were the younger generations that weren't enlisted yet. And they felt bad that they missed out on all the action. And that they were born too late to experience Germany's glory. As hundreds and thousands of Allied soldiers became trapped at Dunkirk, the Germans used this as an accusation stick suggesting the French and especially the British that they had given up too easily. Many German cinemas couldn't cope with the newsreels that the German press delivered. Sometimes 10 shows per day were offered. In some cases, German visitors, they only came to see the newsreel and then left before the feature film started. The Germans made huge amounts of French POWs. Now, among the French soldiers, there were also French West African troops. The German audience responded in shock when seeing the close-ups of the African faces. Some women claimed they felt paralyzed and could only breathe again once German soldiers reappeared on the screen. In many cinemas, visitors rose up and they shouted that these African soldiers were beasts and that they deserved to be shot. And this did actually happen. Several thousands of Senegalese soldiers in French uniforms were shot and killed by the Germans after they had surrendered. The response of the German audience cannot only be explained by German propaganda. Earlier, in the aftermath of the First World War, the Rhineland was occupied by French forces and among them there were French colonial troops. A myth was created that these French black troops had assaulted German women and as a result of that, several children were born. These children became known as the Rhineland Bastards. The true story is that some of these children were actually born out of marriage or out of wedlock and other children they came from the former German colonies in Africa that were taken from Germany after World War I was over. Upon viewing the French African troops again the German audience felt that the German attack on France was justified so that these men could never terrorize their population again. On June 22nd the French surrendered. Hitler insisted on an exact replay of the armistice of November 1918. And the next newsreel culminated with the acceptance of German terms in the same railway carriage in the forest clearing at Compiègne. Afterwards, in a classic compulsory gesture, the carriage was brought to Berlin and exhibited at the foot of the steps up to the Museum of Antiquities. There was relief. The campaigns against Poland, Denmark, Norway, the Benelux countries and France had resulted in the loss of 61,500 men. No comparison with the 2 million killed in the last war. The SD described the mood on the streets. The national mood gave way to a celebratory mood of quiet, proud joy and thanksgiving for the Führer and the Wehrmacht. The luck and successful improvisation during the German invasion of France stood at the base of their victory. But this was gladly ignored and gave way of a sentiment that the Germans were superior in race and military. After the victory over Poland there was not much room for celebration because Germany was now at war with France and Britain. But now the hereditary enemy of France was down. One down, another one to go. More on that later. A big thanks to the patrons you see on screen and a special thanks to Janusz Dojinkiewicz, Joan, Justin Trebel, Peter King, Tanya Dixie, Henry Clarkson, Rob Park, RL and Fernando Lopez Ojeda. Hey, if you want to learn about the German invasion of the Netherlands and you haven't watched one of my best views videos yet, well what are you doing? Click here, it's right here. This video is part of a series about the German perspective on the Second World War, part of a playlist. Playlist can be found right here. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share. Thank you so much for watching. See you later.